know about this secret ability that you can do with this character? And this is how you kill a player with max health in literally one second. This is a complete guide for every single character in Jujutsu Shenanigans. And starting off, we got the honored one himself, Gojo Satoru. And let's start off with his very basic ability, his R ability. Nope. This is an ability that just lets you teleport to any person that's next to you. The next ability that we got from Gojo is his first ability, his Laps Blue. It basically just pulls in a nearby player and you kind of just kick them into the sky. Whee! But do keep in mind that this ability is blockable, so if someone has their block up, then you will be able to pull them towards you. The next ability that we got here is Reversal Red. It's kind of the opposite of laps. Instead of pulling them towards you, you actually shoot a projectile towards them. And this ability can be blocked, but they do have to be facing in the direction of that ability to actually block it. So if they're blocking in the wrong direction, this ability can definitely hit them. The next ability that we got here is the Punches ability. The way you want to use this ability is as a block breaker. So if someone's just holding down blocks, you just simply use this ability on them. It just breaks through the block and it starts punching the crap out of them. Moving on, the next ability that we got here are the kicks. This ability is extremely similar to the third ability. It's just the same thing but instead of punching your kick, it's a block breaker and it does a decent amount of damage. Now let me tell you guys some ability combinations that you can definitely use when you're fighting against people. The first one that I got here is the laps combo. For this, you just want to click one and you want to be looking at the exact spot that you kick your opponent and then you want to click R. What this does is it basically just teleports you towards them and you just kick them one more time. For the next one, you can combine your R ability with your reversal red. Teleports you behind them and shoots the ability straight away. You can use this against people that are just annoying and hold down block all the time. They will definitely not expect it. The next combo that I got here is with the fourth ability. This is the same concept as the first ability. You kind of just use the fourth ability on them, and when they go flying, you click R, which makes you teleport into the sky and kick them further. For this next one, it's actually a pretty cool combo, and I'm actually not sure if the devs intended this, but it's a pretty cool way to damage the crap out of your opponent without them being able to do anything. And for this, you just have to use the fourth ability, and as soon as you kick them into the sky, you want to click space and then use the third ability instantly. What this is going to do is it just locks them in place, takes them straight into the next combo, so they won't be able to do anything. Now let's talk about the alts. The alts for every single character are pretty simple. You just have to do enough damage until this alt bar fills up. You just have to click G and it opens your alt. And for Gojo, his alt has a total of four different moves. First one is the max laps blue, where you just spawn in a huge ball of blue energy and it just sucks around everything next to it. And you can actually control where this goes. The next one is the Max Reversal Red, where you basically just shoot out a beam of energy. This one doesn't deal as much damage as blue, but it's still a pretty good ability. Then we got the third ability, which is Hollow Purple. You just merge the blue ability, and then the red ability, and then blue. You can shoot out a huge ball of purple energy that does a butt ton of damage. Moving on, the fourth Yo, ability that Gojo has is his Domain, where basically anybody that gets trapped in it won't be able to move, and you can just pummel the crap out of them and deal as much damage as you want. But if you do get a lot of people in your domain, then it's going to be hard to kill all of them. So make sure you use your time efficiently. <sighs> The next ability that Gojo has is somewhat of a secret ability. It's the Max Purple. And the way you do a Max Purple is by killing someone with your Max Blue. And once you do that, you're gonna notice that this ball of blue energy actually stays behind, and then you just have to shoot a red into it, and then boom. You create a massive purple that does a massive explosion, and this is actually an ability that does the second most damage out of any ability in the game. But that is if you're standing right on top of it. And keep in mind the damage someone takes from this ability actually depends on how close they are to it. Moving on from Gojo, the next character that we got here is the Vessel, aka Yuji. The R ability basically just lets you fake an ability. Start using an ability, then you can click R, and this just cancels you doing that ability and removes your cooldown. But let's get into the abilities themselves. The first one is this dash ability that you get, where you dash straight into your enemy and you just start punching the crap out of them. Then we got the second ability, where you just grab them and slam them straight into the floor. Now the third ability is actually pretty cool because it has two different versions. The first version where you just punch them normally, and the second version where you can do a black flash. And to get the black flash timing right, you have to pay attention to the hand. Once it's drawn all the way back, then you want to click the ability key again. And black flash does way more damage than the normal version of the ability. Next up, we got the fourth ability, and this is a parry ability, where it just lets you curve around the ability, go to the person, and you can just start doing damage to them. Moving on to the Awakening for Yuji, which isn't actually Yuji anymore, because Tsukuna takes over. And during this Awakening, your M1 changes into small versions of Dismantle, which is honestly a pretty cool addition. Your very first basic ability turns into a stronger Dismantle, where you just hit your enemy with a really strong attack. Then we got the second ability, which is just a huge firestorm. You can shoot a fire arrow, hail down a butt ton of fire. The third ability is called Rush, where you basically just dash straight into your enemy, kick them into the sky, and slam them back into the floor. Then the the fourth ability is obviously the domain expansion. And this is one of the most powerful domain abilities in the whole game, especially if you trap a lot of people in it. Basically how it works is that everybody inside your domain is constantly going to be taking damage from dismantle literally every single second. And the only way to survive this domain is by holding block the whole time. So if you're trapped in this domain by yourself, then you're basically just guaranteed dead. The next ability is called the world cutting slash, and it does the most damage out of any ability in the game. And the way you use it is by clicking your one key, your three key, your two key, and the R key, and then boom, you're going to let out this huge slash that's going to deal a bunch of of damage to anything that it hits. And that's pretty much it for Sukuna. Let's head over to the next character, Restless Gambler, aka Hakari. So let's start off with the R ability. Basically, what this does is it just parries. And you can kind of just use it to stop most abilities in your track. Hey, 
The first ability is called Air Shot. You shoot out one air projectile, and as a standalone ability, it's not really that good. You kind of just want to use this ability if your opponent is knocked on the floor. Next up, we got the second ability, and this ability that creates doors that you close on your enemy. And it's a pretty good way to start combos. So the third ability is called Rough Energy, where you basically just punch your enemy, and that's pretty much all you do, and it just sends them flying into Ragnall. Then we got the fourth ability, which is called Fever Break. You kick your opponent, and then you kick them once more into a door. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the abilities. Let's move on to the Awakening. And I recommend making sure no one's actually standing next to you, because that's the best way to use this domain. And the way your domain works is actually pretty simple. You kind of just have to sit inside and wait. By waiting, I don't mean literally just standing AFK. You have to be using your abilities that have a physical form, and you just have to wait until you hit a jackpot. Once you do, your domain is going to collapse. You're going to come back into the normal world, and you're just going to have a butt ton of better moves. And the best thing about this Awakening is that you literally can't die, because your regeneration is so fast that no single person can do enough damage to you to be able to kill you. Anyways, the very first ability of the Awakening is called Lucky Volley, where you just punch the crap out of your opponent a butt ton of times. The next ability is called Lucky Rushdown, where you just grab them and just send them flying. Then we got the third ability, where you just do the same thing, but instead of sending them flying, you just repeatedly hit the crap out of them. Then we got the fourth ability, where you just grab them, send them into the sky, and just smash them into the floor, dealing up a ton of damage. And the R ability for Hikari actually changes during his awakening, and it's called Rhythm, where it just speeds up all your moves the more you use it. Overall, Hikari is honestly a really good character. Moving on, the next character that we got here is the Ten Shadows, aka Megumi. The R ability for Megumi is actually a movement ability similar to Gojo, and the pretty cool thing you can do with this is that you can actually grab throwables and then enter your R ability. And once you come out, you're actually going to notice the throwable isn't there, and the way you can access it again is by using your R ability and then clicking M1. You can just kind of use it as a part of a combo if you run out of moves. <laughs> Moving on, let's start off with the very first ability. This is an ability where you basically just summon a button of rabbits on someone, and this is easily blockable from every direction, so you just want to use this if your opponent is ragdoll. The next ability that we got here is Nui, which is just a huge bird that flies into whatever direction you're aiming. The next ability that we got here is the Toad, and this ability actually does zero damage. It just kind of pulls your enemy towards you, so you can start dealing damage to them, and it can be a pretty good combo starter. The next ability that we got here is the Divine Dog, where you literally just spawn in a dog that can do damage for you. They can be from low to medium range, and the dog can only do damage three times before it despawns. Some pretty cool things you should should know if you click R after using the new way ability and then you're gonna grab its leg and fly with it which is honestly pretty cool with the toad ability you can actually combine it with new way to create a bunch of flying toads which just pull the user up into the sky another thing to know about this dog is that if you actually take damage it completely despawns so make sure you use it wisely anyways moving on to the awakening for megumi you get a total of four different abilities the first ability of his awakening is called max elephant where you just summon a huge elephant wherever you're aiming and it's unblockable then we got the great serpent ability where you just control a serpent you can eat as many people as you want and it's just gonna poison them dealing damage to them over time Next ability is the Shadow Swarm ability, where you basically just spawn a bunch of clones of yourself and you just combo the crap out of your opponent. And another cool thing that you can actually do with this ability is that you can actually invade domains with it. And the way you do that is by walking up to the barrier and just using the ability key, then it just opens a portal and anybody can walk into the domain. And the only domain you should honestly use this on is Hakari's domain, because what is the point of entering somebody else's domain? Imagine you enter Gojo's domain or Tsukuna's, like what even is the point? The next ability that we got here is his ult. This ability is called Maharaga, where you literally just spawn in a beast. And the reason I say spawn in is because you don't actually become this beast well you kind of do but you actually end up killing your normal character as you'll see by the animation the very first ability that he has is called Divine Pummel, where Maharaga just kind of grabs you and just smashes you all around the place. Then we got Ground Pit, where you can just grab a pile off the ground and just throw it at someone. If you're actually close enough to the person, then you actually grab them as well with the pile, and then you can just throw it wherever you want. Then we got the next ability, which is called Earthquake, where you just slam the ground with a butt ton of force. And if you actually hold down this ability, it actually deals more damage and affects a greater area. And one thing you should know about Maharaga is he actually has three different versions. And the way you can change his version is actually by turning his wheel. And the way you do that is by clicking G and R. In the attack mode, his fourth ability is actually different. And is called takedown where he kind of just dashes towards your enemy and just slams them wherever he wants in the adaptation mode his fourth ability is actually the world slash which sukuna can use but keep in mind it doesn't do anywhere the same level of damage that sukuna's ability does next up we got the third mode which is the defense mode he actually reduces the amount of damage that he takes the next character that we got here is Perfection, aka Mahito. And just like the others, I'm gonna start off by explaining the R ability. At first, it's gonna look like you just change the shape of your hands, but each hand shape actually gives you a different Q ability. When you change your hands to these sword looking things, it basically makes you teleport through your enemy, and if you go through them, you deal a bit of damage. And if you have these big blocky hands and you use your Q ability, then you kinda just spin around dealing damage in a huge area. The blocky ones deal more damage, but they are way slower. Anyways, let's talk about the actual abilities themselves. The first one is pretty basic, kinda just spawning these hammers, and you can just smack the crap out of your enemies. The second ability is this rapid fire gun that you get. And just like the bunnies from Megumi, I don't actually recommend using this unless your enemy is ragdoll. Or they're in the middle of using a move that has a pretty long startup time, then you can just use this to interrupt it. Then we got the third ability, which is a normal punch, or that's what it might look like. It's actually a black flash if you get the timing right. And this also has another variant where if you use the ability and then click R it, you get a chain whip where you just elongate your arm and just slam it into them. Then we got the fourth ability, which is some kind of snake creature, which is pretty easy to aim. It doesn't do too much damage, but it does have a long activation time. And if you're fighting at the edge of the map against someone and you're about to lose to them, just use this ability 
ability and just throw them off the map. It is extremely cheesy. Moving on to the Awakening, the first ability actually changes into this ability where you can kind of just pummel the crap out of your enemy and just do a guaranteed black flash. But it has a different purpose as well. But if you do end up timing it, then your opponent is literally just going to die instantly, no matter what their health is. And this is actually the only ability that can kill Hikari when he's in his ult. The next ability is the second ability, which is called Drill Splitter, where you just cling onto your enemy and just drill the crap out of them, dealing a lot of damage. Then we got the third ability, which is a grab ability, where you can kind of just grab them in this huge fist. And the more you spam the ability key, the more you slam them into things. And make sure you're not only spamming them into the ground, also direct them into walls because it deals more damage. Next up is the fourth ability, and this is the domain. And this domain is pretty unique, where each individual person trapped inside the domain has this meter next to them. And if it goes all the way to zero, then they literally just die. And as Mahito, the way you can drain their meters is just by standing close to them. The longer you stand next to them, the faster the meter drains. And that's pretty much it for the characters.